The South African Research Chairs Initiative, or SACHI, was established in 2006 with the aim of attracting leading scholars to the country's public universities and of retaining them by funding their work for up to 15 years. Stellenbosch University has been awarded more than 30 SACHI chairs so far, one of which went to this man, a foremost expert in his field. I am Omezurike Linus Opara, a distinguished professor in post service technology at Stellenbosch University, where I also hold the South Africa Research Chair in post service technology. So that's uh, part of the government strategic initiative uh, to build South Africa's uh, capacity in innovation through research uh, that is positioned in the universities. Professor Opara does research into post harvest technology, but what exactly is that? Post-harvest technology is the aspect of the agri-food system which looks after what happens to crop once it is harvested. The application of engineering sciences and related technologies to facilitate the harvesting, the handling, the transportation, the logistics, the packaging, the distribution and marketing of these commodities until they reach the end user. We'll get back to the substance of Professor Opara's work in a moment. First, let's get to know him a bit better at a personal level. My interest in post-service technology and agriculture comes from my background. I grew up in a rural village in the southeastern part of Nigeria. In fact, my village specifically is called Omonam. And I, that particular village is known primarily for agriculture. My father he had to go to the cities to work, and there were job opportunities for him. So I spent most of my childhood days with my mother. That means we spend the time in the farm. In fact, it got to a stage by the age of 10 or 11, my mom would leave early by 5.30 or 6 in the morning and give me the materials required to prepare the food to come and join her later during the day. So when we talk about food security, I, I, I feel it myself. And I remember as a little boy, waiting for a day, waiting for two days for my mom to come back with food. I'm not sure whether she will come back with food or not. And if you look at the military interregnum during the Civil War of Nigeria, when many of us lived in the bushes, people were not able to cultivate. They were not able to trade. And there was Kwashoko, young people with their stomach up big like this. And I was watching some of my age mates die literally in front of me not from any other disease, because there was lack of food. In the work we do here, we want to contribute to food security by increasing the availability of food. Professor Opara's academic discipline applies engineering principles to agricultural processes. What attracted him to this particular combination? When he got to the stage of thinking about higher education, agriculture was always in my blood, it was always in my mind. And when I decided I was going to do engineering and ran through the list of courses to do, I saw mechanical, electrical, civil. As soon as I saw agricultural engineering, I connected. And that connection has remained today, that now I have three degrees, Bachelor of Engineering in Agricultural Engineering, Master of Engineering in Agricultural Engineering, both of them from the University of Nigeria. And then my PhD also in Agricultural Engineering at Massey University in New Zealand. And I ended up doing my PhD looking at the problem of cracking and splitting in apples, which was a quality problem. Because when the fruit got exposed and cracked, then opportunistic pests and diseases will get inside and you have spoilage. When I arrived in South Africa in 2009, I got an inquiry from the farmers who were having similar problems in South Africa. And through the literature search, my name kept popping up and they came into this office to ask me information about it. So I ended up summarizing some of the work I did in New Zealand in the early 90s uh, for farmers in South Africa as a way of information sharing. But how did Professor Opara end up in South Africa? So when I was in New Zealand, after I finished my PhD, I got an opportunity to be hired as a lecturer in post service engineering in the same university where I had studied Massey University. I had projects in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in China. And during those one of those meetings in Vietnam, there was an international post service meeting. I just finished making my presentation and I went back uh, to sit with the audience. And a lady walked to me and said, brother, you have to come back to the continent. And I looked at her and said, okay, this white lady, I never met her before. 
and she's calling me a brother that I must come back home. Do you know, the post harvest community is small. We know each other. Uh, so if anyone's at a conference and you don't know them, you will particularly focus on the content of their presentation. And um, I was listening to him and I thought, my goodness, this guy's brilliant. Uh, why is he not in Africa? I mean, this is our brother and uh, we need scientists in Africa first and foremost. I looked at the CV and I thought, my goodness, uh, he's an agricultural engineer working in post harvest technology. It's the gap. We don't have that expertise in South Africa. She said, brother, you must apply. And of course I did. And that is how I got to know about the Sachi Chairs and that's how I landed at Stellenbosch University. What I proposed for the South African Research Years Initiative through Stellenbosch University was to look for technological innovations in the post-harvest area after harvest to support the South African agriculture and horticultural industries. Something that has been characteristic of Professor Opara's time as Sachi Chair has been that he has not tried to go it alone, but has instead from the beginning collaborated with others, transcending disciplinary boundaries to address complex challenges. I met Prof Opara, I would guess about 15 years ago. It was at a meeting um, at Stias, and somehow we sat next to one another and we started chatting and uh, he is an engineer but working in post-harvest technology and, uh, and we decided to see whether we can't collaborate. And I think it's a very unique feature of the Sachi chair that we have operated during the last 15, years, last 15 years, interdisciplinarity. And we believe it is actually one of the strengths that, was made, that has made it possible for us to make our little contribution that we have done. I have experienced sometimes that academics are very protective of what they're working on. And, and that is so sad. The magic comes out when you have a broader view on the problem. In other words, people from, from, from other disciplines working, working with you. In the same spirit of collaboration, Professor Opara also believes in casting the net wide when it comes to capacity building. So we've been recruiting students um, from all over, so to say, both within South Africa, within SADC, and Africa at large. One of the uh, guiding principles that I believe, and I saw it as a personal role, uh, given my experience around the world, was that human capacity development must be the bedrock of socioeconomic development, including even technology development. We spoke to some of Professor Opara's students, both former and current. He guides you, he mentors you, and he doesn't make you feel, even if you don't know it, he doesn't make you feel as if you're stupid or you don't know it, he always guides you. He's always uh, trying to uh, get us to look at the bigger picture. How does our work impact not just a science, but in general, what is it going to contribute to, to, to society? Prof. Farrell uh, is very instrumental and was very instrumental in my personal development, in my career development, uh, because uh, in fact, as a PhD student, I was gaining work experience, you know, I, 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 he would delegate uh, some tasks to me to do, he would ask me to represent him, he would ask me to even train my fellow students, my fellow uh, postgraduate students. And now all these young men and women are scattered both in the private sector, both in universities, University of KwaZulu-Natal, University of Johannesburg, Stellenbosch University, the Agricultural Research Council of South Africa, and so on and so forth. If you move up north, you go to universities in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Uganda. We have students who have been graduated through this. I am very, very passionate about our continent. The resources are here. The human capital, in terms of numbers are here. All we need to do is to find the right combination of our human capital development and our natural resources to actually become the best in the world. Because we do know now that 60% of the total global uncultivated potential agriculture is on the African continent. What an opportunity. Not that we don't connect with the rest of the world. We still collaborate with our colleagues, but we must bring something to the table. So we, I don't want us to see ourselves as a continent of beggars, where we always, our arms are out there asking for aid, asking for knowledge and everything. We can become co-creators. And the little work we have done for the pomegranate industry in South Africa is a typical example. 15 years when I arrived in South Africa, 
If you plotted a graph of the global production of pomegranates, you will not see South Africa. But by building our pomegranate research project within the search each year and intensifying capacity building and working along this value chain approach from maturity indexing to packaging, the story has changed. South Africa is now number one in terms of generation of new knowledge for pomegranate globally. It's because of what we have done in Africa, at Stellenbosch University, under the such a chair. We are one continent. Our future lies in working together. And we need lioness. We need lioness to take us forward and to work together with the other scientists working in post office. And you know, we are no longer in those silos. We've broken down those silos and it's time for us to have a united front and uh, to work together with our brothers in this continent. We have to, if we're going to make a difference. Professor Opara's Saatchi chair comes to an end in 2024, but its work will be continued by a new institute that has already been established at Stellenbosch University. So a couple of years back, when I knew we were getting close to the end of the Saatchi chair, I proposed to the university that we set up the Africa Institute for Post-Service Technology as an interfaculty platform to continue the work of the Saatchi. So it's not only intra-faculty within the agri-sciences, but to provide a platform where people from engineering, from faculty of science, from business, can actually come together to continue the work of research in advancing post-service technology research and education at Stellenbosch University. So I can see myself in the next few years of my acting life, traveling a lot on the African continent, spending time in East Africa, in Nigeria, trying to make my own little additional contribution to demonstrate uh, uh, what is possible through the work we've done through the Sachi chair. But Stellenbosch will always be my academic home. And what about his family? How have they experienced South Africa, bearing in mind that they frequently had to reapply for residency and that his wife was refused a work permit? It was quite tough on the family, readjusting schools, my wife Gina, if not getting a job and the rest. But in terms of our own feeling that we have made some little modest contribution to society and to institution, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, our do two daughters are all Matis. Um, the eldest one, Ijeoma, is doing her PhD in political science. Um, Okarunyema last year finished from our medical school. So we, we, we are all part of this journey and everybody had, um, have had a good time one way or the other. But I owe a lot to them because when I arrived here, we didn't have any family. We didn't have any friends. And they were courageous enough when I told them, guys, we have to go. And we all supported each other. And um, yeah, so it's been a very, very um, fruitful journey. From Nigeria to New Zealand, Oman to South Africa, with pit stops in Italy and Iraq. Professor Opara has certainly come a long way, but his incredible journey is clearly far from over. May he reach many more milestones. <laughs> <laughs>